This is the Suzuki Jimny, and isn't it just the coolest little thing? However, today we don't want to concentrate so much on what it looks like as what it can do, and for that we need a place like this. Now before we begin, let's first consider what it is that makes the Jimny so well suited for off-roading. To begin with, as you can see, it is tiny and that not only means it's very manoeuvrable, but also that it's light. It also has very short front and rear overhangs and a nice high ground clearance, all incidentally improved slightly over the previous Jimny. And what that means is that it has excellent entry, departure and breakover angles. So it's very good at going over crests and through ruts and things. Obviously, Suzuki has included a selectable four-wheel drive system too, as well as a low-range gearbox. Plus, the Jimny sits on the same kind of ladder frame chassis as serious off-roaders like the Land Rover Defender and has rigid axles and a very strong body to stop it from flexing. Now, there are some downsides to this, he says as he tries not to fall over. One of them is that all this stuff takes up a lot of space and so the boot is tiny. The rear seats are also on the small side, the idea being that you have either rear seats or a boot, but not both. What you have to remember though is that the Jimny is a specialist vehicle and so compromises are inevitable. The question is whether those compromises are worthwhile or put another way, does this thing do what it says on the tin? Now, on the subject of being fit for purpose, it's worth just mentioning this dashboard layout here because it's so much more modern than the previous Jimny's, while at the same time being sturdy and oh, it's going to last. Plus you get things like Apple CarPlay and SatNav, which is great. Right, we are doing some serious off-road driving here. So once we've started the engine, we're going to put it in four-wheel drive with this lever here. And then if I push that down and pull it back again, that beep, that gives me the low range gearbox. So let's set off. Now, the first thing we need to know is what's under the bonnet, which is a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine. It produces 100 horsepower and 95 pound foot of torque. And that might not sound like much. I mean, it's not much, let's be honest, but it's probably about all you need in a car of this size. Suzuki could have used its one litre booster jet turbo engine instead, but is adamant that the more linear power delivery of a naturally aspirated engine is better suited to off-roading. Now, as we bounce around here, let's have a think about some of the things that make the Jimny such a capable off-roader. For a start, these windscreen pillars are not only nice and thin, but they're also really vertical and these windows are cut out here so visibility is excellent plus the corners of the car are nice and square so it's easy to judge where the extremities are however for me personally the thing that makes this so much fun off-road first it's tiny so you really can thread it through the smallest of gaps but also it's just so capable While there aren't vast numbers of electronic aids, you do get hill descent control to hold you at a crawl as you drop downhill. On the flip side, leave the Jimny in gear, don't touch the throttle, and it will pull you along without stalling, so low speed control is excellent. Now speaking of control, the other electronic system worth mentioning is the traction control, which uses kind of torque vectoring rather than locking differentials to give power to the wheels where the grip is. And what that means is that you can point the Jimny at something and then feel as the power shuffles about around you, pulling you through. The result is the kind of remarkable off-road ability for which the Jimny has always been famous, even when it's on standard road tires like our test car. All of which is, quite frankly, <laughs> brilliant. If you like the Jimny for the way it looks, then you should adore it for what it can do. As owners of the previous Jimny, which has been about for around 20 years, will tell you this thing is absolutely the real deal. <laughs>
However, that isn't quite the end of the story. That's because we can't really call this a review without also telling you what the Jimny is like to drive on the road. And the answer to that is not all that brilliant. It's noisy, it's bumpy, the cabin is cramped, it rolls around like a boat in a storm when you go around corners, and the steering is vague. Safe to say then, if you want a car to drive long distances in, the Jimny isn't it. If you need a go anywhere vehicle that can still be used for on-road driving, that looks brilliant and that could be bought for about the price of a Super Mini, then there's really not much to touch the Jimny. Throw in the fact that the previous version was known for being both very reliable and sturdy, and you have what is a compelling little car. I, for one, think it's brilliant. For more new and used car reviews, please do subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel. And to find a great deal from a top-rated dealer on your next car, head to cargurus.co.uk.